of the uh, Macra Parish Council. Thank you. That was only so I can introduce Bruce to say the blessing. <laughs> Let us give thanks. Father in heaven, we thank you for the goodness that you have given to us all this day. And now we come to thank you not only for fellowship, but also for the food that lies before us. Bless it to our use so that we might serve you more for the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now, I Thank you. 
and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people with equity. before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, you have never waited for us to become perfect before showing us the measure of your love, before commissioning us to serve you in our world. We dare to believe you are always calling us to a new venture, pointing us to new horizons in ministry, and will never cease to do so. This is a task, Lord, that we cannot do alone. We need you as our guide and the love of each other. On this occasion, we therefore claim the privilege of committing ourselves anew to your service. With your help, we'll bear one another's burdens and love our neighbour as ourselves. We'll accept disappointment and frustration, opposition and rejection and not lose heart. We will love your world as you love it. Bring friendship into our work and courage into our politics. We will bring freshness into our homes, excitement into our studies and adventure into our church. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us, stir into the flame the gifts you have given us and the faith to use them without reserve. As your disciples, make us know the freedom to move into the unknown and the untried, to see the opportunities in the new day, and to serve our present age with compassion, imagination and courage. Lord, be with us until we have done our part and share your joy. Let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
great or small, has important work to do. For seldom do we realise the importance of small deeds, or to what degree of greatness unnoticed kindness deeds. For it's not the big celebrity in a world of fame and praise, but it's doing unpretentiously, in undistinguished ways, the work that God assigned to us, unimportant as it seems, that makes our task outstanding and brings reality to our dreams. So do not seek an idly wish for wider new dimensions, where you can put in practice your many good intentions. But at the spot God placed you, begin at once to do. Little things to brighten up the lives surrounding you. For if everybody brightened up the spot on which they're standing, by being more considerate and a little less demanding, the dark old world would very soon eclipse the evening star. If everybody brightened up the corner where they are, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
one of Sunday effects. Uh, the schools should have been a bit even more. <laughs>
and Stephen and Andrew and Mark, who I got to know very well last year. I, I do wish you all, on behalf of the people of Boystown, God's richest blessings in your room and your new life at home. We're going into cremations in the church. We're just off the main highway. We're going through Penguin. It's great when you all the issues at once. I can tell you all the ones you've got no excuses. As you go through Penguin, you turn to the left of the main street and we begin the main street next to the dentist, number 43. Okay, you've gone past the dentist, you've gone too far. And you've got to find out you've been past that coming in. Well, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, unprepared for public speaking as I am, <laughs> I just happen to have my notes with me this evening. Boris's scripture. That's the wrong one. Have you got the right one in here? <coughs> oh, this will have to be off the cuff. Very good, Mr. Caffrey. I like that. Hang on a minute. You couldn't get any better than here. <coughs> Heather, that third speech of yours was quite well. You had two practices of Boys Dale. <laughs> Uh, there's one other gentleman that tonight remains seated and quiet. When we first moved to um, the place next door, there was quite a number of people who aren't here this evening because they had moved on as well, who came and, and welcomed us. I think it was about the um, second or third day. The second or third day, I was uh, still trying to collect my thoughts and wonder where to put things. And lo and behold, this grey-haired old gent came in with a, with a young fellow, sat down in our old lounge suite and made himself at home. And uh, I didn't know what to say or, 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 and I said, who are you? And he said, oh, I'm just around about these parts. And now I'm working with him. Norman came in and made us welcome. Not thinking that um, this man from about these parts would teach me so much. And it's to Norman tonight that, um, well, one of those who I remember has come in and sitting by us. I want to relate a little story to you of what happened to me many, many years ago. I had done my two years of Bible college and had come back to Victoria trying to get into the Methodist Church. And they said, go away and get your local preachers and your matriculation. So off I went. And I was stationed at um, a place called Lawn as a manager and a cook of a hotel motel. And someone had worked about that the, the new man down at the motel was a Christian. The minister called on to me and he said, um, what do you do Thursday mornings? And I said, oh, I'll clean up, chop wood, do all the other things that one normally does after the guests leave. He said, could you spend an hour doing something for me? I said, I'll try doing it ever since, usually Thursday mornings for about an hour or so. And um, I enjoy teaching Christian education. He gave me a piece of advice which I've never ever forgotten. Because uh, like so many of us, we know so much but we don't know what to say. It's like this tonight. I mean, what can you say after all of what has happened here? And it's almost as though thank yous are not enough. So I said to him, what do you teach? What do you tell the boys and girls at school? 
I said, I wouldn't have a clue. I've never done it. I've never taught Sunday school. He said, you only have to tell them two things. Just two things. Love God and love your name. And I said, is that enough? He said, you'll probably get some problems. He said, most people usually keep the first part and forget the second, or else they forget the first and keep the second. And you'll find it very hard to have both belts. And I um, would like to read the passage which he referred to me to at that time. It's in Mark's Gospel, it's in chapter 12, it begins at verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. <laughs> well said, the teacher. The man replied. You are right in saying that God is one, and there is no other but Him. To love Him with all your heart, and with all your understanding, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God.
don't have a lot of good news this morning. Um, Michelle Hume is now in the Women's Hospital in Melbourne and um, we ask that you remember Michelle and Ian in, in your prayers. Alma Ramsey passed away on Tuesday night and Doug Thirty on uh, yesterday morning. So we remember the families of Alma and Doug in our prayers. I guess one bright spot this morning is it's Bruce's last service. Just <laughs> uh, very briefly, seeing we, we won't have a minister for the next few uh, it was a tremendous service that we had last Sunday night when this church was absolutely packed. I haven't seen it quite like that uh, for a service before. It's a tribute to you. Um, I guess I'm, you're the reason that I'm here. I was a bit of a backslider and, uh, five and a half years ago and Bruce sort of got me on the straight and narrow and uh, I thank you for that. We wish you and Heather and the boys well in Pakenham and as you say, it's on the highway, there's no excuse for not passing through, for not calling in when we pass through. I've certainly enjoyed your company. I hope that uh, I've taught you a little bit. I know you've certainly taught me a few things. And uh, I wish you well on behalf of the Matthew congregation in uh, the next at least five years. Thank you. Now, sorry, there is one meeting that's not listed. I'd like to say a special thanks to Heather for her contribution over the time required for the operation. We go to the issue. Especially Joyce. Especially Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> and um, sorry, Joyce, we will all miss the contribution you've made and the, and the fact that you worship the Lord with your voice. And so, Heather, on behalf of this wife, and this is your company, and 